Today we're going to be doing this wonderful, magical underwater turtle in Carbothello pastel pencils, pan pastels, and stick pastels. For those of you who are returning, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Michelle Morius and I create art tutorials that are fun, easy, and accessible for everyone. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, I subscribed, and I'll be sure to get back to each and every one of you. I'm going to slow this part down a little bit. Um, to explain to you how I'm using these pan pastels to do the background uh, water part of this turtle drawing. So we're using pastel matte paper today for this exercise and I've transferred my image by tracing my turtle on a piece of paper and then I put some soft pastel on the back and I flip it over and I go over it with a pencil and it leaves a nice chalk outline on the pastel matte paper. And this I'm gonna use for my guideline um, to draw my turtle. So right now I'm going in with the pan pastels and I'm using a soft tool. It's spelled S-O-F-F-T. They come in different shapes and sizes. Um, they come in a square uh, form, a pointy form, a rounded um, sponge on the top. And I'm going into my pan and I'm applying directly to the paper. Now you can mix your colors right on the paper or you can mix them on a separate piece of paper and then put them down. In this case, it's a lot easier to blend pastel when you have a nice little base layer going down. So I am mixing in some white, some blue, and that aqua color to get that beautiful um, water color. These soft tools are great because it pushes that pastel right into the tooth of the paper. So there's no need for a blending stump um, or you don't have to really rub with your fingers. Um, it gets it right in those grooves of the paper and you won't have to worry about a lot of dust settling. Um, with pastels, they can be very dusty depending on the type of paper you're using, but this pastel mat really can take quite a bit of color on it, and that soft tool just gets it right into those little um, valleys of the paper. And I'm mixing right all my colors together, and the more pastel you have down, the easier it is to blend, but you do have to be careful because it does fill up after a while and there's going to be a limit after a while of how much more you can put on top. So we're going to be using our pan pastels for the background and for some of the parts of the turtle. Um, and then we're going to go into our Carvothello pencils, which you can get um, a nice sharp point on so you can get all those little details in there. And I'm going to use a few of the Prismacolor pastel sticks as well. Um, for colors maybe that I don't have in my set of Carbothellos and um, also you can get some good nice detail with those sticks. I'm getting a really nice um, tropical water feel with these colors that I'm using from the Pan Pastels. These are from the Pure Color set um, so you can find those you can buy them separately or buy them in a set and they have other sets available that are just for landscapes or for portraits um, this pure color set you can blend from these colors that are included there's 20 colors in the set and you can pretty much make uh, almost any color that you're looking for by blending these um, this is very easy to blend right on this pastel matte paper and uh, I'm getting this beautiful blue aqua uh, tropical watercolor with these um, pan pastels. So I usually like to do my background first and that's pretty much with anything that I do and the reason being is that you don't want your main subject to look like it was cut and pasted on the background. You don't want to have to try to go around your main um, thing 
with the background color. This way I can really make it look like it is in the environment that it is swimming in uh, rather than trying to go around everything with the background itself. You don't want to look like it's cut and pasted. So I usually always do the background first and then go in with my turtle on top and then he just will look like he's really meant to be in that environment and not cut and pasted. I'm just blending in my background colors now, adding a little bit more white for uh, the look of the sun coming through the water. And I'm gonna make sure everything's blended really nicely so that I'm ready to start on my turtle. Um, so like I said, you want to finish that background and that way, you know, your outline for your turtle, all of your, your turtle shell and his head and everything will go over that background just slightly so it doesn't look like, um, you know, he's not meant to be there. So I'm just trying to blend everything nice and smoothly and um, I'm going to add a little bit of stick pastel, white stick pastel later on um, to brighten up that uh, sunlight coming through the water. So I'm going in with my outlines now. I don't like to really do outlines, but I'm going in with a light shade that I can cover up later on. I just don't want to get lost as I'm going, so I'm just trying to give myself some guidelines um, as to what goes where. So I call this color mapping. I'm going to go in and just kind of represent where each color is going. I'm not going in with any detail right now. I'm just adding bits of color where uh, they're represented on the drawing. Now, um, you don't really need sharp pencils at this stage in the game. We will later on when we go in with more detail. And you notice I put some blue down on his chin and on where his uh, leg on the right hand side is curling back because it's the blue of the water that's gonna reflect on his underneath his belly and underneath his head. Like I said before, we're color mapping. So I just wanna put in um, the basic shapes and, and colors that are represented in the drawing. And then we're gonna blend as we go along. And like I said, it's a lot easier to blend when you have a little bit of a base layer down. So this color mapping really does help uh, to put the nice first base layer down and then everything else is going to blend beautifully when you start to add all of those different tones and colors in it's all going to blend beautifully and seamlessly um, because you have that nice first layer down I think every drawing goes through this like weird little ugly stage where um, you're just like oh where am I going with this but this color mapping will help you to not get lost um, in the drawing and it will come together Pastels come together fairly quickly. I like it. It's a it's a quicker medium than color pencil um, because you really if you can't really make a mistake. You can always go over it. And the beauty of pastels is you can go over uh, light on top of dark or dark on top of light. But I do like to keep those lighter areas light from the very beginning. So I'm mapping in with my white, which is the um, actual fleshy part of the turtle head. And um, I'm gonna keep that fairly pure. There's gonna be a little bit of browns and tans that are gonna get mixed in with that. But um, from the beginning, I like to keep it uh, light if it's gonna end up light in the end. So I'm going in with my white um, stick pastel and I find it that it is actually whiter than the Carbothella white pencil. So it really will pop those areas um, that you wanna keep pure, that stick pastel. It, it just is really crisp and clean looking um, and I really can't get that as white with the Carbothella pencil. So that's one um, little trick that I have and I always have some extra white sticks on hand because it does get a real, real nice bright white um, where the, the pencil just doesn't cut it. Um, you can blend with the pencil, uh, but that stick pastel really gives you um, a nice pop of highlight. So after I get those bright whites in, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen my carbothellos and um, this way I can start going in with more and more detail. So um, our color mapping 
we've we've done most of it. I'm going in here with some gray to put the shadow on his um, arm, or it kind of looks like a wing, but it's his his arm or his fin. And um, and then we're going to go in with our sharp pencils, and I'm going to add all the detail of the spots um, that are on his his arms. And um, and you see me putting more blue in to reflect the blue of the water underneath his chin and on the side of his face and that'll get blended in uh, with some white and some light gray. So the Carbothello pencils are fairly hard, um, the actual pigment that's in the pencil. So you can get a really nice sharp point on them. And I use the Derwent Super Point Pencil Sharpener and you really can get a real sharp, sharp point. Um, it's not really necessary with pastels for most of this drawing, but there are some real fine details that I like to get in and the sharp pencil does help get those in. So where his eye is and his nostril and the mouth, um, there's some like ridges above his mouth. Those are all great to put in with a nice sharp tool. Um, and you can get some really small fine details with a nice sharp pencil. But for the most part, you don't need to have them all sharp from the beginning. Um, it does eat away your pencils pretty quickly if you sh you're sharpening them every time. But um, I do like to get all those details in. And you'll see as I go along, we're going to really add more and more color in. And we're going to richen up all those colors and really make this drawing pop um, in the end. So I always start off lighter and then really start to add in all of my um, darker details and my shadows as I go along. I really like to pop um, all of my um, highlights and pop all of my um, dark shadows. The, the biggest secret to a really realistic drawing is to use a full range of values and really, really high contrast. So you're going to see that we have a lot of high contrast in this drawing. So you've got the watercolor against the brown of the turtle, against the blue under his mouth, and he really starts to get three-dimensional looking and really, really pop off the page. So just be aware that you want to use all of your values. Don't just use one or two tones of brown. Use, use some oranges and some yellows in there, whatever you need to to get the um, ultimate color that you're looking for and really pop those highlights and dark shadows. If you're enjoying my tutorials and you want to up your art game, you can pop over to my Patreon page where I can do a full length tutorial on this turtle and a lot more. I give you a traceable outline, I give you the reference image, a materials list, and a real-time full-length tutorial narrated by me of the entire process of this drawing. So hop on over. I'll put the description in the description box below and we'll see you on Patreon. It would mean the world to me if you guys would give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section below. I really love hearing from all of you guys and I do get back to each and every one of you. I've made some fun friends um, through the discussion on the comment boxes and I really um, enjoy having um, a discord with you guys uh, about what you want to see and how, how you're doing with your drawing and you know what you'd like to see me do next. So please leave me a comment and give me that thumbs up. So we're getting there with the drawing now. He's really starting to look pretty cute. Um, and I really had fun um, drawing him today. Um, we still have to do that fin on the left hand side. And we're gonna go in with that in a second. So now it's all about really putting in um, as much detail as possible and trying to get my final blends in so that everything looks seamless and blended the way it's supposed to. And so we're just kind of giving everything a really good fine tune and, and a good blend to make sure that that pastel is pushed into the paper. My reference image today was a um, free reference image source Max Pixel. 
and I have it on the iPad um, up in front of me and I can refer to it as my reference photo and I can blow up certain areas on the iPad if I get stuck with one certain area I can kind of blow it up and look at it and look how it's um, kind of formed and it helps me as I go along to guide me so if you don't have an iPad or a phone where you can blow certain areas up just print your image out um, and if you print it out make sure that it's the same size as your finished drawing and this will help you you can use the grid method um, but you, it, it'll just help you go along um, to do section by section if you get stuck somewhere you can see exactly what you need to do if you'd enjoyed today's tutorial and you want to see more please subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment I love hearing from you guys and I look forward to seeing you on the next video so we're just cleaning up our stray uh, dust and our last little bit of details and I want to thank you so much for joining me I had so much fun and happy art